I got this Dell Inspiron 5675 gaming PC off Facebook Marketplace for 50 bucks. My plan was to see what upgrades it would need to make it even remotely useful with current popular games. And are those upgrades actually worth it? So if you have a computer like this and you're not sure if you want to upgrade or buy new, or perhaps a parent looking to buy your kid's first gaming PC but don't want to break the bank, stay tuned. The first thing I did was test the computer's performance and capability as is, and then do some research on what upgrades were even possible or feasible. Those are steps one and two. I'll get into more detail about them as we get started with step three. My priority for this upgrade wasn't just to spend as little money as possible, but to use as much of what's already there as I could. For instance, if I swapped out the motherboard and power supply, that, in my opinion, is essentially a whole new build. So I wanted to keep those two components. Feel free to comment below if you disagree with that. But this now means I can't just pop in the most powerful CPU and GPU I want and call it a day. One of the biggest problems with pre-built PCs like this from companies like Dell or HP is that their motherboards tend to be proprietary in design and have no ability to upgrade the BIOS, so you can't use newer generation CPUs than what it already has. This Dell, as I got it, came with the 4-core Ryzen 5 1400, RX 560 GPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and a good old-fashioned 1 terabyte spinning hard drive, all mounted to an X370 motherboard that Dell specifically designed to prevent you from upgrading to 3000 or 5000 series CPUs. I got very lucky with this purchase. The guy who sold it to me hadn't let it get very dirty at all. So cleaning it out was super simple. Just a little blowing, vacuum, and a light wiping down with some rubbing alcohol. Though, I highly recommend you deep clean your PC at least once a year. It will pay dividends down the line. All right, here are the items I've purchased for the upgrade. The two fans and CPU cooler I bought new off Amazon, everything else used off eBay, and I think I got a good deal. Especially since after doing the math on the power draw, I'm only going to be pulling 73 more watts than what we started with. Our new CPU doubles the core count from 4 to 8 and has a boost clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz. Be very careful when placing these in the AM4 socket. Inspect it first for bent pins and look for the little arrow on the corner of the CPU that matches up with the little arrow on the corner of the socket. Ensure they're paired up before dropping it in. Not everyone does this, but it is a seven-year-old machine, so I opted to swap out the CMOS button battery. This Gen 3 M.2 is not the fastest. I bought it used, I think it came out of an old laptop, but it's still 10 times faster than the hard disk drive I took out. You can't overclock RAM on this motherboard, but these two sticks are still a little faster than the one I took out and double the capacity. I've never installed an aftermarket air cooler before, and the brackets that hold them to the CPU can vary in design, so I was sure to read the instructions and make sure I didn't use the wrong parts or install it backwards. I'm rather partial to the thermal paste method of spreading it around with that little spatula they often provide, largely because I don't trust it to spread around evenly on its own. I didn't forget to remove the protective sticker on the cooler, but... I did get ahead of myself and pre-install the fan on the tower, preventing me from reaching the screw that attaches it to the bracket. In my defense, the instructions mentioned nothing about installing that fan. Don't worry, GPU installation is never as intimidating as it looks. They pop in pretty easy. But even with these smaller units, make sure the screw holding it in is bearing the weight of the GPU, not the socket on the motherboard. And now that we've got all that scary stuff installed, just have to pop in our two new Be Quiet fans to help with airflow. Replacing the rear fan was super easy. It has those little rubber plugs that just pop in and out. The front fan is what proved to be a huge challenge. Its placement was going to be about 30% obstructed by the design of the case. 
but even accessing where the front fan mounting holes are, it's a huge pain in the ass. The front panel is made up of two panels and won't come off until you remove the top panel by finding the mystery screw holding that in place. But once all that extraneous plastic was removed and the fan installed, I was ready to do a quick test just to make sure everything was connected properly before I went through the arduous task of reassembling this case. Fans are on, lights are on. I recommend you always do this to save yourself the agony of taking something apart again just because one little thing wasn't plugged in properly. All right, and there she is. Time for the moment of truth. We've got blue lights, fans running. See what happens. 60% of the time it works every time. All right, no signal from the GPU. Time to troubleshoot. All right, so I don't know exactly what happened. Um, I really didn't do anything. I just unplugged it, turned it off, turned it back on again, and it worked. I know it's a cliche, but don't freak out right away if something doesn't turn on. It's Windows, baby. All right, I'm gonna run some tests, compare it to the old data, and see what we get. Instead of using benchmark tools that test only one component at a time, like Cinebench or Heaven, I opted to use a handful of benchmark tests that evaluated the computer as a whole. I used Novabench, PCMark, and User Benchmark, then compiled all those scores on a graph to get a visual sense of the outcome. The results were way better than I honestly expected. The overall performance increase was an average of 136% across the board, with gaming performance getting a whopping 200% boost in some cases. The boot up time dropped from a minute 25 down to 22 seconds, which is very refreshing. Now, this still doesn't rank anywhere near the modern gaming PC standard for impressive, but it's more than enough to play many popular games out there now, like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex Legends. It even got an average 93 FPS in Black Myth Wukong. So what's the takeaway here? I think there are plenty of circumstances where updating an older gaming PC will definitely be the most cost-effective option. By my estimates, this computer could have another two to three years of pretty good use. Remember, most of the popular gaming development world isn't keeping up with hardware advancements. The trend over the last 20 years is that computers are remaining viable for much longer. I did a whole video about this last year. You can check that out. Sure, there's plenty of PC elitists out there who will scoff at this notion, who think, Last year's tech is junk and anything less than 200 FPS is unplayable. But they're the same fools who will go out and spend thousands on spinning rims and underglow lighting just so they can stand next to their ride and feel like a baller. And if you're a fast and furious gamer, all about the clout, go for it. This kind of gaming PC is for the gearhead who wants to rivet their own monster together and take it out on track and see what it can do. So what now? I've successfully revived this old clunker and don't want it to go to waste. Plan is, of course, to sell it, ideally to someone who could get some really good use out of it. But first, I want to reach out to the young college student on Facebook Marketplace who sold it to me. When I purchased it from him, he mentioned being interested in maybe building his own gaming PC one day. Well, perhaps this particular one that I've upgraded will serve his current needs and I want to let him have first crack at it. Either way, I hope this video was informative and helpful to someone out there. Thanks for watching. If you liked learning from my mistakes, subscribe for more videos as I tinker with various technologies and gadgets. I just realized how much of a Linus Tech Tips fanboy I look like right now. I am.